Welcome to another session of Pinoy Builders webinar. I am Sofia Cruz, your host for this afternoon. Pinoy Builders is an independent media company providing content focused on the construction industry since April 2019. Visit the official Pinoy Builders page and log on to our website for the latest in all things construction. Our first speaker is a licensed mechanical engineer and a certified security professional. He holds the International General Certificates IGC-1, GC-2, and GC-3 for Occupational Safety and Health from the National Examination, Examination Board in Occupational Safety and Health. He was accredited by DOLE as an Occupational Safety and Health Practitioner last 2013. He has been in the field of occupational safety and health for more than a decade, wherein he has handled and completed various projects such as petroleum operations related projects and construction projects. He has previously worked for more than five years as an OSH officer at the Philippines' largest petroleum company and currently holds the position of health, safety, and security manager for special projects at Holcim, Philippines. Meanwhile, our second guest speaker is a registered civil engineer and has an MBA in Production and Operations Management. He is a DOLE accredited safety practitioner and DOLE accredited trainer on occupational safety and health and a certified security professional. He is a proficient safety advisor and trainer on all levels, specializing in high risks project management. He is currently holding a position as a health, safety, and security officer at Holcim, Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Engineer Redden Reyes and Engineer Mikael Bugo from Holcim, Philippines. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, our participants are safe and well. So we'll be discussing... Uh, Dolles Department Order Number 13, Series of 1998, or the Guidelines Governing Occupational Safety and Health, or OSH, in the construction industry, with updates as per Department Order 198, Series of 2018, or the Implementing Rules and Regulations of Republic Act 11058, or the OSH law. So, for the first description, this presents pertinent features of DO 13, Series of 1998. Uh, that was developed by the Department of Labor and Employment through the BWC or the Bureau of Working Conditions. Of course, with updates from DO 198 series of 2018. Uh, a little disclaimer, uh, most of the photos used in this presentation were taken prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. So, uh, this course aims to provide the participants uh, or, or aims to guide the participants in order to comply with the requirements of DO 13 series of 1998 aligned with the requirements of the OSH standards and the Department Order 198 uh, series of 2018, you know, uh, or the Implementing Rules of Re and Regulations, as I said earlier, of uh, RA 11058, or uh, the Act Strengthening Compliance with Occupational Safety and Health Standards and Providing Penalties for Violations Thereof, or commonly known as the OSH law. For the major topics, so we'll be discussing uh, the objectives, the, some definition of terms, the coverage of this department order, the construction safety and health program, PPEs, of course, safety officer, and occupational health person and personnel and facilities as per uh, DO198, so in update na po na natin yung requirement for the latest department order. Uh, construction safety signages, uh, safety on construction heavy equipment, uh, construction Safety and Health Committee, uh, Construction Safety and Health Training, the reports regarding construction safety and health, uh, the workers' skill certificates, the workers' welfare facilities, and some violations and penalties for. Now, the objectives of Department Order 13 is to ensure the protection and welfare of workers employed in the construction industry. Of course, we, uh, as employers, Gusto natin, uh, maprotektahan yung mga tao natin because they are uh, part of our uh, assets. Ano? So, aside from that, uh, it also ensures the protection and welfare of the general public within and around the vicinity or the immediate vicinity of the construction work site as well as the promotion of harmonious employer-employee relationships. So, hindi lang yung worker ang pinaprotektahan natin, pati yung mga uh, 
general uh, public dun sa paligid na ating construction site. And also to take into consideration industry practices and applicable government requirements. Now, some definition of terms. When we say construction safety and health committee, this is the general safety and health committee for a construction project uh, that shall be the overall coordinator in implementing the OSH program. For the construction safety and health program, this is a set of detailed rules to cover the processes, operations, and practices that shall be utilized in a specific construction site, of course, in conformity or in compliance or aligned with OSH standards, including the person responsible and the penalties for violation. Most of the times, nga kasama pa rito, hindi lang penalties, we also have uh, the reward system na ini-implement sa construction sites. Uh, the emergency health provider refers to the person or organization who is certified or recognized by the DOH who can provide the same or equivalent emergency health services as an emergency hospital, including emergency treatment of workers on site, emergency transport and care of injured workers to the nearest hospital, with adequate personnel, supplies, and facilities for the complete immediate treatment of injuries or illnesses. Now, for the construction safety and health, of, health officer, or commonly known as the safety officer, this is any employee trained and tasked by the employer to implement OSH programs in accordance with the provisions of the OSH standards. So we'll be talking about the safety officers uh, later, the requirements and the kung, kung ano pa yung mga uh, classifications ng safety officers. Uh, this issuance or this uh, department order shall apply to all operations and undertakings in the construction industry and its subdivisions, namely general building construction, general engineering construction, specialty trade construction, based on the cl classification code of PICAB or Philippine Construction Accreditation Board of the Construction Industry Authority of the Philippines. Of course, apply, applicable din siya sa companies and entities involved in demolition works. And of course, those falling within the construction industry as may be determined by the DOLE Secretary or the Secretary of Labor and Employment. For the Construction Safety and Health Program, uh, DO 13 states that every construction project shall have a suitable construction safety and health program, which means tailored fit po siya sa uh, construction na gagawa, hindi yung general na basta na ipapasa natin. Ano? This must be in accordance with the rules and other orders and issuances issued by DOLE. The construction project manager shall be responsible for compliance with this requirement. The construction safety and health program shall be executed and verified by the construction project manager, manager and shall be submitted to the Bureau of Working Conditions which may approve or disapprove the construction safety and health program. Ano? The cost of implementing the construction safety and health program shall be integrated into the project's construction cost. Now, uh, the construction safety and health program shall state the following. Of course, the composition of the safety and health committee for the construction, the specific safety policies or the rules which the general constructor or contractor shall undertake to observe and maintain in the construction site, the penalties and sanctions for violations of the construction uh, safety and health program, frequency, content, and persons responsible for the orientation, for instructing, and for training all workers at the site. Uh, usually, this task is given to the safety officer, otherwise, uh, or some engineer, sorry, engineers, and the manner of disposing waste arising from the, uh, sorry for that, from the construction. Or when I will say uh, waste, so we're talking about uh, the debris, and some scrap materials you know, that uh, are uh, the byproducts of the construction process. Okay. Of course, uh, this uh, is the minimum requirement only for the construction safety and health program. Now for the PPE, please take note that every employer is required at his own expense to furnish the workers with PPEs that are necessary by reason for the hazardous work processes or environment chemical or radiological or other mechanical irritants or hazards capable of causing injury or impairment in the function of any part of the body through absorption, inhalation, or physical agent. The provision of personal protective equipment or PPE shall be in accordance with Rule 1080 of the OSHA standards or yung pinatawag natin yellow book. The equivalent cost 
for the provision of PPE shall be an integral part of the project cost. Now, again, some pointers regarding the PPE. The employer shall provide adequate and approved type of PPE uh, for, the, for the workers, of course. The workers within the construction project site shall be required at all times to wear the necessary PPE. Yan na po. Uh, kung ang, ang employer is required na mag-provide, the worker should at all times wear them. Wear them ano, kung, kung kahit saan applicable. And then, specialty construction workers must be provided with special PPEs like specialized goggles or respirators for welders and painters or paint applicators. Or in this case, sa photo na pinapakita natin, is a special uh, full body harness with a specific lifeline for working at heights or working on roof. All other persons who are either authorized or allowed to be at the construction site shall wear appropriate PPE. Please note to check with the OSH Center or Occupational Health Safety and Health Center to know if a PPE passes the performance testing and is of approved standard. Now, for the safety officer, uh, this is the requirement as per Department Order 198-18. Safety officers shall be employed with the following duties and responsibilities to oversee the overall management of the OSH program in coordination with the OSH committee, frequently monitor and inspect any health or safety aspect of the operation being undertaken with the participation of supervisors and workers. Of course, uh, na highlight your participation of supervisors and workers so that they will understand where the safety officers are coming from. Assist government, government inspectors in the conduct of safety and health inspection at any time when work is being performed or during the conduct of accident investigation by providing necessary information and OSH reports as required by the OSH standards. And of course, issue the WSO or the work stoppage order when necessary based on the requirements and procedures provided by the OSH standards. Ilan ba ang dapat na meron sa ating construction site? So, this chart shows uh, the minimum classification and number or minimum requirement for safety officers that should be employed for a high-risk workplace. Uh, when we say high-risk, kasama po sa high-risk high risk workplace ang uh, construction uh, sites. Ano? So for uh, workers, uh, for sites with one to nine workers, there should be one safety officer two or SO2. For 10 to 50, uh, one SO3. From 51 to 199 workers, one SO2 and one SO3. From 200 to 250, there should be two SO3. 251 to 1000, there should be one SO2 and two SO3. And for every additional 250 or fraction thereof, uh, for example, you've reached 1200, then you should have an additional, uh, aside from the one SO2 and two SO3, you should have an additional one SO3 or one SO4. Uh, please note that uh, as per DO13 series of 1998, for every 10 units of heavy equipment, there should be one safety officer. Ano po? Now, bakit tanong nyo naman, ano po yung pagkakaiba ng SO2, SO3, and SO4? Ano? So, uh, may mga classifications kasi ang safety officers as per DO198-18. So, ito po yung mga minimum qualifications niya no, as prescribed by uh, DO198-18. So for SO1, we have a minimum requirement of uh, prescribed or other prescribed training on OSH is, should be the eight-hour OSH orientation course plus two hours of trainer's training. So wala pa siyang requirement na minimum number of years for the OSH experience. For SO2, uh, the safety officer should have uh, undergone 40-hour basic OSH training or yung BOSH applicable to the industry kung saan siya pumapasok. Uh, of course, for the construction industry, normally, ang kinukuha ng mga safety officers dyan is yung kosya. No? Okay? So, wala pa rin minimum number of years for the OSH experience. Now, when we go to SO3, aside from the mandatory 40-hour basic OSH training, there should be an additional 48 hours of advanced or specialized OSH training course applicable to the industry and other requirements as prescribed by the OSH standard. Of course, there's a minimum two years experience in OSH uh, for, for you to become an SO3. For the SO4, uh, aside from the 40 hours of uh, BOSH, basic OSH training, uh, there should be an additional of 80 hours advanced or specialized OSH training 
applicable to the industry, and an aggregate of 320 hours of OSHA-related training or experience. So please note that the additional training may be converted to years of experience where 80 hours of training may be equal to one year of, of experience or vice versa. So pwede convert yung one year of experience into eight, 80 hours of training naman. And of course, uh, again, other requirements as prescribed by the OSH standards. And for the SO4, there should be an actual experience as SO3 po na, as Safety Officer 3 for at least four years. Okay. Now, let's go to the occupational health personnel and facilities. Again, this is as per Department Order 198 uh, Series of 2018. So uh, this shows uh, the, the needed uh, occupational health personnel uh, for medium to high risk workplaces. Ano? So for 1 to 50, 1 first aider, 51 to, one, nine, to 99. Uh, one first aider, and two part-time occupational uh, health nurse, and so on and so forth. So when we say po na part-time, that means four hours a day, three days per week ang kanyang duty. When we say naman full-time or yung FT, it should be eight hours per day, six days per week. And then the occupational health personnel should be placed in the shift with the highest number of workers. Um, for dentists naman po, alternatively, U.S. establishments can enter into a memorandum agreement or, or, or contract with the dental services for workers uh, provided that the requirements for dental facilities are, meant, are met. Now, for the occupational health physicians, if more than one part-time physician is required, a physician must be present in all workplaces of the establishment. So, for example, uh, for 200 to 500, the requirement natin dyan na position is dalawang part-time. Since ang part-time natin is three days per week, so dapat yung six days sa, sa isang linggo covered niya nung dalawang part-time na yun. Now, for every additional 100 workers or fraction thereof, there should be an additional first one first aider. For every 250 workers or fraction thereof, one additional full-time nurse. And for every 500 workers or a fraction thereof, should be uh, one full-time dentist. And for the position, there should be one full-time physician or two part-time na physician po. Regarding naman po sa facilities, uh, nasa kanan po, pinapakita natin yung mga requirement uh, na first aid treatment room, the clinic, and the hospital ano, as per the number of workers. So from 1 to 50, there should be one first aid treatment room. Uh, 51 to 99 uh, workers, there should be two first aid treatment room and one clinic with uh, a clinic with number one number of bed, one bed. For 100 to 500, so for the first aid treatment room, for every additional 50 or fraction, uh, additional 50 workers or fraction, dapat may additional isang treatment room. However, uh, for 100 to 50, there should be a clinic with two beds. Now, from uh, 501 to 2000, uh, there should be uh, additional uh, one uh, clinic bed for every 100 workers. You know? And when we reach the 1000 to 1001 to 2000 number of workers, uh, there should be a hospital. Now, there's a caveat here. The employer may not establish a hospital or dental clinic in the workplace. If there is a hospital or dental clinic which is located not more than 5 kilometers away and accessible within 25 minutes of travel time. So also, the employer has, must have the facilities readily available for transporting workers to the hospital or dental clinic in cases of emergency, such as an ambulance or a patient transport, transport vehicle. So for this purpose, the employer shall in, enter a written contract with the hospital. Now, yung engagement naman po ng emergency health provider as uh, we've uh, defined earlier uh, for the construction sites shall be considered as having complied with the requirement of accessibility to the nearest hospital facilities. This is uh, as per Department Order 13 Series of 1998. Of course, the employer shall always have in the construction site the required minimum number or minimum in number of uh, or inventory of medicine supplies 
and medical equipment as indicated in Table 47 of the OSH standards. For the, of course, uh, sa construction sa sites natin, maraming uh, hazards dyan ano, na pwede makasakit. So it is a must that the construction safety signages must be provided in order to warn the workers and the public of the hazards existing in the workplace. Of course, uh, requirement would be the, uh, the usage of PPEs, the mandatory PPEs. Yung areas kung saan may potential risk of falling and falling objects. So normally you can see this when you pass by a, a building being constructed. Areas where there are explosive and uh, flammable substances is stored. Areas where there are tripping or sleeping hazards. Approaches to working areas where danger from toxic or irritant airborne contaminants or substances may exist. Uh, for example, if you're using toxic substances or uh, sometimes there are dust that, uh, that is uh, an irritant airborne contaminant. Of course, for all places where contact with or proximity to electrical equipment can cause danger, or of course, uh, you can be ele electrocuted. You know? All places where workers may come in contact with dangerous moving parts of machineries or equipment. Uh, sample of this is an area where there are mobile equipment such as excavators, uh, payloaders, forklifts, uh, bulldozers, where talagang makakasakit siya ng tao pag may, nat may natamaan siya. And of course, uh, there should be periodic updating of man hours gained or lost. Okay. Now, let's go to the poll question. As uh, Sophia said earlier, there will be poll questions. Can you please launch the poll question, please? Okay, I, I think that concludes my uh, presentation. Let me turn over to uh, my colleague, Mick. Thank you, Sir Redden, and good afternoon to everyone. Let me just present my screen. Mom Sophia, can you see my screen? Yes, sir, visible for on screen. All right, thank you. So to continue on safety on construction heavy equipment. So for the pre-constructions, there has to have an inspection and certification of all heavy equipment and as well as the uh, uh, all heavy equipment operators and as well as the heavy equipment that will be used. Now, this uh, certification will be conducted in accordance with the standard rate test prescribed by TESDA or the TESDA organization. Now, for heavy equipment, there has also to be uh, testing and accreditation and certification from the DOLI or other recognized organization. Now, these organi organ organizations that are recognized by TESDA and DOLI, these are the, cons the company that are authorized to conduct testing and certification to all heavy equipment operators and as well as the heavy equipment itself. To continue on mobilization or transport of heavy equipment, we have to bear in mind that there is a load restrictions of trailers carrying such heavy equipment. Trailers should be can withstand the weight of the heavy equipment that is being carried. Load restrictions such as height, the width, the clearances as imposed by the Department of Public Works and Highways for roads and bridges must be utilized during transport. So there is a restriction and it must be ensured that the height, the width of the lifted heavy equipment can pass through roads and bridges. And only duly certified operators are allowed to load and unload heavy equipment trailers. And then of course, the equipment that must be transported should be properly secured to the trailer. In the erection or setup of heavy equipment, there should be a full, thorough, full and thorough inspection and checking of the hazards. And these hazards must be avoided. There has to have a standard checklist of steps and procedures that must be observed. And there has to be a list of equipment, the tools, the materials must be available and properly utilized meaning that we are going to use all equipments appropriate for the equipment. And also there has to be a routine inspection. The general constructor and the equipment owner and or the equipment owner shall maintain a separate log of maintenance, repairs, tests, and inspections. Routine inspections meaning there has to be a periodic inspection such as maintenance and repair to the heavy equipment. The certified operators it must be only the duly certified operators that can 
operate the designated heavy equipment. Now let's go to the Construction Safety and Health Committee. When we say committee, it is a composition of relevant personnel for an organization. Now for the Construction Safety and Health Committee, the compositions are the following. We have the project manager or his representative as the chairperson or ex officio. He will act as the chairman or the chairperson or he will head the health safety and health committee. Another is the general construction safety and health officer. It has to be a lead officer or commonly known as the health and safety manager we have in common, of the, uh, common companies. And there has to have a construction safety and health officers. These construction health and safety officers are specifically assigned in a specific task reporting to the health safety manager or officer. Another is the safety representative from each subcontractor. So there will be instances that the main contractor will have to get subcontractor and there has to be a representative from each subcontractor to join the safety and health committee. We have doctors, nurses, and other health personnel as required by 1042 of the OHSS. This was discussed previously by Redden regarding the requirements of our doctors, nurses, and other health personnel. And of course, the workers' representative. So if there is a union in any, in any uh, group or contractor or company, there has to have a minimum of three members to attend or to join the Construction Safety and Health Committee. So what are the tasks? What are the objectives of the Health Safety and Committee? Safety and Health Committee. They are the ones to plan, they are the ones to develop and oversee the implementation of accident prevention programs for the construction project. project. They are the ones to direct the accident prevention efforts for the construction project in accordance with these rules and construction safety and health programs. So if you have your construction health and safety program, the construction safety and health committee has to lead the implementation in accordance with these rules in the program. They have to initiate and supervise the conduct of brief safety meetings or toolbox meeting or the short meeting before every task. And also, they have to review reports of safety and health inspections, accidents, investigations, if there are any. Now, if there will be incidents or accidents that transpired within the course of the project, the Construction Safety and Health Committee will have to lead the review of reports of the incident. Also, the Construction Safety and Health Committee has to prepare and submit to Dolly the minutes of committee meetings. So there has to be a monthly meeting or a regular or a frequent meeting, periodic meeting of the committee, and the minutes of meeting will be submitted accordingly to Dole. They will provide necessary assistance to the government inspecting authorities in the proper conduct of the enforcement and other activities. So there will be instances that DOLE or any le legal regulatory body will come to our company to our project to visit. May it be regular, random, audits, or checking. So the Construction and Health Safety Committee will be the one to assist them. Initiate and supervise safety and health training for employees. There will be specific training for every specific employee and the Safety and Health Committee has to initiate and supervise. They are to develop and maintain a disaster contingency plan. Disaster contingency plan is some uh, commonly known as emergency plan. And the Safety and Health Committee has to organize such emergency services units as may be necessary to handle disaster. The Safety and Health Committee has to develop or to organize emergency response team for the disaster contingency plan. For the safety and health information, the workers should be informed of potential safety hazards to which they may be exposed. Why? Because they have to be familiar for what they are doing in the project site. And the workers should be instructed and trained on the measures available for the prevention, control, and protection against those hazards. They will be well informed, well trained in the prevention and protection of those hazards identified. Every worker shall receive instruction and training regarding the general safety and health measures common to construction sites, such as their basic rights and duties, what are the welfare and amenities that they need to have in the project site, the measures of housekeeping, proper care, and the proper use of PPE, and as well as the emergency. So every worker must have an instruction and training for these particular things. Specialized instruction and training should be given to the following. So there should be a specialized instruction and training to the following, the drivers and operators of lifting appliances, 
transport, earth moving, and material handling equipment, and etc. Workers engage in the erection or dismantling of scaffold. So there has to be a specific certification and training for this one. Workers engage in excavations. Workers handling explosive or engage in blasting operations. Workers as signalers, they are the signalman. They are the one to engage the signals for any lifting activity. Other workers as may be categorized by TESDA. So other activities or other work categorized by TESDA that should be required special instruction and training. Now these persons or these workers has to have a specific training because these are identified as high hazard activities. So for the construction, construction safety and health training. So there has to have a basic safety and health training for all employees or for all workers on the project site. And this should be a 40 hour training course as prescribed by the Bureau of Working Conditions. All safety personnel involved in a construction project shall be required to complete such basic training course. Again, all safety personnel involved in a construction project shall be required to complete such basic training course. So if you have 40 hours, if you're going to divide uh, technically for a normal working shift of eight hours, the basic construction safety and health training would run for around five days. And every construction constructor shall provide continuing construction safety and health training to all technical personnel under his own employee. So there has to be a continuous education, learning, and training for all technical persons under his employee. For the construction safety and health reports, all general contract constructors shall require to submit a monthly safety and health report to the Bureau of Working Condition or the Dole Regional Office Concern. So kung asa, kung where, where will you be located? Kung saan region kayo? It is where that you are going to submit the monthly construction safety and health report. The report shall include the following. So this is the, the composition of the report. It has to have a monthly summary of all safety and health committee meeting agreements. There is to be an agreement. There is to be an actual issue that will be raised by the committee. And it has to have a specific and doable actions and agreements in the summary. The summary of all accident reports in, and investigations. So if there will be instances that during the course of the public project implementation, na merong accidents or merong investigation, this should be reported as well. And periodic hazard asset assessments with the corresponding remedial measures of actions for each hazards. So continue with construction safety and health reports. So in the case, in, in any case of any dangerous occurrence or major accident that would result to fatality or death or permanent total disability, the concerned employer or the company, the construction company, shall initially notify the Dole Regional Office within 24 hours from the, from the time of the occurrence. So again, the Regional Dole Office will be notified within 24 hours from the time of the occurrence. Notify means, does not mean that we're going to submit a complete thorough investigation. Notification could be in a form of text, in a form of email, in a form of call. After the conduct of investigation by the concerned construction safety and health officer, the employer shall report all permanent total disabilities to regional Dolly office on or before the 20th of the month following the date, the date of occurrence of accident using the form Dolly BWC HSD IP6. So for every instances that there will be in, uh, accidents, or any incidents that will happen in the course of the project, it shall be summarized and reported every 20th of the month. So if you want to have the view of the form, try to visit Dolly BWC and have this HSD IP6 form downloaded. So for construction workers skill certificate, all construction workers in critical occupations shall undergo skills testing for accreditation by TESDA. So as discussed earlier, Critical occupations means high-risk activities involving high-risk personnel. So the job affects and endangers people's lives and limbs. This is why we are going to come up with, that is why the TESDA comes up with the testing and certification of this critical occupation because it affects and endangers lives. The, it also involves the handling of tools and equipment and supplies. Okay? If they will not be able to know proper handling of the equipment, 
the equipment and tools may be destroyed or may harm potential potentially harm people. And the job requires a relatively long, long period of education and training because critical occupations would require long long term experience, long term training. No, that is why it is a need for them to undergo skills testing and certification. The job may compromise the safety and health concerns with the vicinity of the site. It does not mean that they will be affecting only their workers, but they will as well affect the workers within the vicinity of the project site. To continue with workers' welfare facilities, the employer, the constructor, shall provide the following welfare facilities in order to ensure humane working condition, meaning makataong working condition. There has to have an adequate supply of drinking, safe drinking water. It does not mean that we have to supply a high-end uh, drinking water, but it is only requiring us to do supply of a safe drinking water. There has to have adequate sanitary and washing facilities and a suitable living, living accommodation for workers and has may be applicable for their families. So there will be times or instances that at the course of the project or in the project is located somewhere in the remote area, living accommodation must be provided to the workers and there has to be arrangement if their families will be living as well. Separate sanitary washing and sleeping facilities for male and female workers. We have to make sure that we have if we are going to come up with a living accommodation for our workers, there has to be a separate sanitation, washing, and sleeping facilities for male, both male and the female workers. Because technically, both male, they have their different uh, demands or needs. Now we go to the violations and penalties. According to Republic Act 11058, or commonly known as OSHLO, and applies to all, it applies to all establishments, projects, project sites, and all other places where work is undertaken in all branches of economic activity, including our construction industry. Okay? So any willful failure or refusal or, no, or for not complying the OSH standards, not complying the order of the DOLE, these are the following penalties that we will be receiving. For a willful failure or refusal to comply with the OSH standards or compliance, Order shall be penalized with not more than 100,000 daily, meaning it will be counted from the start of the non compliance until to the date of full compliance. So, if you will be violating, if you will be not complying for a period, period for a period of four days or 40 days, then 100,000 is then the number of days of not complying. Repeated violation of the same, if it will be repeated again. If you, the violation will be repeated, there is an additional 50% for every instance of repeat. And, make, and take note that it is daily, daily penalty. When the, when the violation exposes the worker to death, serious injury, or serious illness, the impossible penalty shall be of also 100%, 100,000 pesos. So if during the investigation, the violation is proven, that it would lead the workers to death or exposes the worker to death, serious injury, then you will be required to pay 100,000 pesos. And an additional 100,000 pesos fine for the refusal to access the workplace. You know, if there will be instances that they will, you will, be, they will be visiting the place to conduct investigation and inspection, if you will refuse, you will be fined with 100,000. Refusing to provide or allow access to records, if they will have to check your records, as, uh, as required, or it will be very useful for their visit or their investigation, then they have to provide them the records. Obstruct conduct of investigation, misrepresentation, and making retaliatory measures such as termination. If you will be terminating your personnel without proper or thorough process, thought process on how to terminate or how to end the contact of the worker, and then it will be, if it will be proven, then you will be paid penalized with 100,000 pesos. Refusal to pay, refusal, uh, refusing to magbigay ng sweldo sa workers, refusing to, con to give wages and benefits or discriminate any workers who has given information relative to the inspection. Now, to give you a detailed tabulation of the requirement and as well as the penalty, if this will not be complied or provided, here is the following. If you will not be providing the establishment of safety and health committee because it is required by law, 
then you will be penalized by 40,000. Formulation and implementation of comprehensive safety and health program. If, the, if we do not have a comprehensive health and safety program, the penalty is 40,000. If we do not have the provision for information on hazards risk, safety data, safety data sheets, safe work procedure, work permit, isolation systems, then we are penalized with 40,000. Provision of sanitary and welfare facilities, 40,000. Use of approved or certified devices and equipment for the task. No? If we will be using inappropriate or approved, not approved equipment or devices for the specific task, then we will be penalized with 50,000. As discussed, we Sir read Kanina, the provision of PPE. This should not be charged to workers because it is the accountability of the constructor or the company to provide PPE for all his workers. If not complied, then we will be penalized with 50,000 pesos. Compliance with log Dole issued WSO, 50,000 pesos. Compliance to non-compliance to other OSH standards is 40,000 pesos. Another is registration of establishment to Dole. If our establishment or our company is not registered to Dole, then we are required to pay the the penalty of 20,000. Provision of job safety instruction or orientation prior to the work, 20,000 pesos. If you will not be conducting orientation or conduct instruction, briefing to the workers prior to work, then you will be penalized with 20,000 pesos. Provision of workers, training. So first aid, mandatory workers, training mandatory, OSH training for HNS personnel, 25,000 pesos. If you will not be providing safety signages and divided devices, which is very relevant and very important to the construction site, penal, penalty of 30,000 pesos. Provision of medical supplies, equipment, and facilities, 30,000. Submission of reportorial requirements as prescribed by our standards. These are the monthly reportorial, the annual, the quarterly reportorial. If you will not be submitting this one, then we will be penalized with 30,000 pesos. Provision of safety officer and or OH personnel, if you do not have these safety officers or OH personnel in our work site, then we are penalized with 40,000 pesos. And of course, the provision of certified personnel or professional, prof personnel or professional required by the OSH standards, then we are required to pay 40,000. So this is not scary. This is not to scare you that you have a lot of penalties and violation if in case we will not be requiring this one. Just we have, all we have to do is to comply with all the legal requirements, then we are not, then we will not be paying this one. As they say, the cost for implementing safety is far, far way cheaper than accidents or any violations and penalties that we will be incurring in the future. So for the effectivity of this uh, department order number 13, this issue one shall serve as policy and procedural guidelines for this department and its agencies in the administration and enforcement of applicable labor and social legislations and their implementing regulations, meaning that this DO13 is the guiding principle for the construction industry. And this guideline shall be effective, immediately effective 15 days after the publication in newspapers of general circulation as provided in Article 5 of the Labor Code. The Department Order Number 13, Series of 1998, was signed last July 23, 1998, so matagal na, and was published on August 1, 1998 in the Philippine Dairy Inquirer and on August 3, 1998 in, the people, in People's Tonight. So effective immediately after August 3, August 18, the guidelines, the DO13 was taken into effect. I'm going to hand the floor back to Engineer Red and Engineer Mick to answer some of your questions. So let's start with question one. Can the construction start without a safety plan approved by DOLE? Okay, so I'll take that question. Uh, technically, and as per experience, no. Uh, kasi kung wala kayong OSH plan, normally uh, hinahanap yan requirement na yan para makapag-apply for mayor's uh, uh, permit. Ano? Now, uh, realistically, can you start it? Yes, you can start it. Pero legally, and experience, as per experience, and uh, from my point of view, please don't start a construction without the approved OSH plan or OSH program. Why? 
because you are risking uh, yourself to uh, being penalized by the dole. Kasi, for example, they visited your site, uh, tapos wala kayong OSH plan or OSH program, uh, they can easily give you a slap you a penalty of uh, 100,000 per day. Kasi for non, pag hindi kayo nagbigay ng OSH program or hindi kayo nag implement that's already 40,000. Now, they will ask you, nasa ng, ano nyo, ang composition ng Construction Safety and Health Committee? Kahit may maipakita ka, tapos wala naman siya dun sa approved na OSH plan, that's another 40,000. And then there's uh, sa instructions uh, regarding the hazards and risks, that's another 40,000. However, the maximum penalty per, per day should be would be 100,000 no? until such time na may correct mo yun. So, kung gaano katagal bago mo siya i-correct, ganun, ganun mo katagal nire-risk yung sarili mo na pa-penalize ng 100,000 per day. So, I hope okay, that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Red. Okay, so we have another question. Currently, SO2N want to become SO3 and SO4 in the future. What are the requirements, Pa? Uh, let me answer that question, Sophia. Yes, Pa? So currently, he is an SO2 and he wanted to become an SO3 or SO4. Now, if you are an SO2, you are currently holding the mandatory, the 40-hour mandatory basic POSH or COSH training applicable for your specific industry. Now, if you will be going to an SO3, you have to undergo another, on top of your 40 basic OSH or construction course, you have to have a additional 48 hours of adva advanced specialized OSH training applicable also to your construction, uh, to your industry, which is the construction. And another uh, two years of experience in in the construction industry as your as the occupational safety and health. Now, if you will be moving forward to SO4, you will have the requirements of an SO3 plus an additional 80 hours of advanced specialized training course for your specific industry, and an additional 320 of OSH-related training or experience that is equivalent to 80 hours of training and equal or equal to one year of experience and vice versa. And of course, you have to, you need to have an experience of at least four years as SO3 or Safety Officer 3. Okay, thank you. I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much. Question number three po. My expiration po ba ang COSH certification? If yes, every when po ang renewal? Okay, so let me get uh, answer that question. So technically, yung COSH is, uh, wala pa akong naririnig na may expiration ng COSH. In fact, uh, if you've been trained for, for Bosch or COSH, uh, it should be for life. Uh, uh, provided that you have retained the information ano, or you have retained the learnings. Uh, say otherwise, kung nakapag-train ka tapos hindi mo naman siya na-apply, uh, then after a few years, you would be going to the construction industry. So I would uh, suggest that you take another course, uh, just to refresh yung kung ano ba yung mga kailangan natin. Alam when we when we practice. So ayon. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Pa. So fourth question, Pa. We have here: cost for safety is always neglected in the project cost estimate, especially for small projects. How many percent should be considered in the total project cost? And how should the private owner, say residential householder, be a uh, house owner be reminded of this requirement? Or either with the contractor with lower offer? Let me answer the question, Sophia. Thank so, you, Engineer Me. With regards to the specific cost that you were asking for a project, or may it be small project or big project. The cost would depend on the requirement. So because if the activity, let's say you're doing a construction that is just a plain construction without high hazard activities. High hazard activities meaning uh, you have to work on heights, you have to provide uh, isolation for such electrical co uh, wirings or connections, then there has a sp there is a corresponding cost for that. But so as to the specific percentage that you were asking on how much percentage, there, I think there is no specific percentage because it would 
really depend on the scope of work that you will be doing in your specific project. Now, if you were you were also asking if you will be doing in, on a residential activity, how will you be able to uh, to check if or to gauge the cost for safety if the activity the cost is just small or the project is just small? Again, it doesn't really take on the percentage of the total cost. It would really depend on the job description or the specific activity that you will have. So if it if it if it will require you a lot of high risk activities then subsequently it would require you a lot of cost but again let me just clear that the cost for implementing safety is way way cheaper than violating or any accident that would incur in the future that would be all thank you okay, thank you so let me check for the q and a set uh so q and a chat box for another question Ito, this is actually quite interesting. Michael Gonda from Prime Techno uh, from Prime Technology. My question for are all contractors required to have a PCAB license? Uh, can I answer that? Yes, please. Legally, legally, yes. Dapat lahat ng contractors natin there should be PCAB license. Normally, yung mga companies, big companies nga or yung mga kilalang companies, ano, uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, it is one of the requirements bago ka makapag-bid sa kanilang projects. So, yeah. Okay pa. So, let's check. I think we have one more question pa here. For a while lang pa. Ayun. Ito po. What's ang tanong po here, if we can't afford or don't have the standard PPEs available within our area, can we provide non-tested and cheaper PPEs instead? All right. So with regards to the question, uh, the question is if the standard PPEs that you will be requiring is not available and then we will be op we will be opting to a substandard so uh, to answer that question is it's a no because definitely this substandard ppe will not function the way it is because for standard equipment it there is a standard testing for it there is a certification that it is manufactured by the duly experienced certified company so all PPEs that we will be using to our construction workers needs to be standardized. I see, I see. Thank you so much for engineer Nick. Okay, I think we have one last question. Yeah, let me check down po ulit, sir, for a while. Okay, ito po. This I, uh, no, this I find really interesting. Other than TESDA, are there other similar accredited organizations where our skilled workers can be certified to conduct critical tasks? Uh, Mick, you can answer this. Ano? Uh, you can add pala on this. Uh, pero technically, yung alam ko, for now, for, for skilled workers, uh, I think ang test dalang talaga sa ngayon. Uh, I'm not sure if there if test does already accredited uh, some other companies. Uh, that I'm not sure, but I, I can I can check. You know? Pero normally yung mga nire require namin sa per experience I'm coming from experience. Yung mga inihingi namin, for example, certificate of NC2 for excavator operators or heavy equipment operators. We really need uh, the NC2 from TESDA. Uh, in fact, uh, hindi lang namin hinihingi yung photocopy. We also ask them to, aside from the photocopy for our file, we also ask them to show us the original so to ensure that it's not tampered. So that's it. Okay, thank you so much, Paul.